morning, everybody. Bill Moore here. Let's see if we can find something to trade today. So we are going to be looking at 11 baskets, and they are baskets of the components of the Spider Sector ETFs. I have loaded those baskets. I've already run the analysis, and now we're just going to go take a quick look. Uh, a couple of days ago, we found some interesting things, and we're going to go back and look at one of those. Uh, from at that point. But I wanted to show one thing first before we got into that. Let's take a look right here. Uh, by the way, we've set the, the correlation. Uh, when I did the analysis, I did not set it as tight as I did the previous time. Um, but the correlation and the RW coefficient are the same. And then here I've added a few other things. I've said I want a minimum number of winners and a certain amount of expectation value, etc. So instead of just seven like we found last time, we've got, I don't know, 50 or something like that here. But I want to show you one. Let's let's take a look at this one. This is in the utility sector. The utility sector is usually very, very stable, and it doesn't have as much action, perhaps, as some of the other sectors. But when it does, it's it's very it's it's very it's I don't want to say money in the bank because there's nothing ever guaranteed, but it's it's very uh, secure in its return to the mean. But if, if we looked over here a moment ago, we saw a bunch of things that have nice source on this end, okay? A anytime you see something like that, I, I don't want to say get suspicious is not the right word, but, but I'm going to think that something, something is up with that, right? Um, this, is no, this case is no different. So, so let's just look at one, and we can see the kind of thing that happened. You, you can see that if you just take a look down here, it looks very a nice, stable you know, motion like we normally see in the utilities. But all of a sudden, there's a huge gap right here. And now we see maybe a new range forming, OK? Something, something is happening here. So what happened was about six months ago, they had a gas explosion and a series of fires while they were repairing some pipes. One person died, 20-something people injured. Uh, there's some potential criminal charges, and there's going to be tied up in lawsuits for a while. That's the one thing you can't control, right, in, in uh, this type of trading. We do try to control the risk against the, the overall market, against the sector, even against subsectors, we do try to control the risk. But you cannot control the risk of an individual product. By the way, you can't control it with any time you're trading. So that's not just that's not unique to this. If something like that happens, if you're holding nice horse and they have a gas explosion, you're going to get, you know, kicked in the teeth. So in any case, that doesn't mean that this isn't a trade anymore right now, but I'm going to wait. It's only got six months of time since that um, issue. And I'm not going to recommend this right now. I just wanted to show you the kind of thing that you can't control uh, in the pairs world. So let's go back, though, and take a look at one. Let me see. Who was it? I think we can look up into it. And let's see. Who was it? Here it is. Into CRM. Okay. So this is Intuit and Salesforce. We looked at this the other day, and we saw uh, a great-looking chart. And it's still a great-looking chart. We had also seen that it had jumped up. Let's go over. I think I've already turned this into something to look at here. We, OK, so, so the other day we looked at it. It had jumped up to here, and I had said, let's, let's wait, um, because it hadn't turned around yet. It's had one more day of kind of waffling in that area, and then it's had a day. You can, you can call it waffling if you like, but it, it, at least it was a down day. I'm st still going to watch it perhaps today before I do something, but but this is one that I do like. Uh, it looks it looks strong. Let's go let's go take a look at hitting probabilities. So as as we saw the other day, this is a great. Um, a great curve, perfect, perfect for what we're looking for. Great uh, reversion to the mean. Let's run the Ornstein Uhlenbeck. And by the way, in this we we have more than one model uh, the that, that we can use here. But Ornstein Uhlenbeck is kind of ubiquitous. And anybody who's you know comes from the physics and math world, uh, probably this is the the model they're familiar with. And it's a good solid model. So let's just leave that for the moment. Let's run the simulation. And this one is showing, OK, so we're at 12.81 right now. And it's a short, of course. So we want to know how often we're going to be below that. Um, it says 93.5% of the time. That's a very strong number. And let's look at our, they're saying a target of a, of a $1.11. So, so let's go back and look here. So the $1.11 is the mean, right? Or, so it's saying, what's the target to get back to the mean? Um, 
we, we might could target a different price, right? Let's, let's, let's also go back and compare it, say, to a $7 target, which would be just inside the first standard deviation. So let's look at this. So, so at, a, at a $1.11 as a target, it's saying we'll be there half the time in, in 26 days, okay? Um, and again, that's, that's good. Those are good numbers. And here's the histograms of, of the results of those things. But let's take a look what happened if we only wanted to go to $7. If we only are looking for seven dollars, half the time we're going to be there in eight days. So, so these are really good numbers to me. To me, I, I like um, I like the fact that perhaps even in you know a week and a half we can be getting out of this with a very nice profit. The the net results of of uh, the potential win versus loss a month. You know this is this is looking at the thirtieth bar out. Uh, so so basically a little over a month. Um, is 93% to 7%. So I like these numbers. This is going to be the recommendation that I'm going to be looking at today. So this is a short. So for every share of INTU that you sell, you're going to buy 1.47 shares of Salesforce, of CRM. Sell one share of INTU, buy 1.47 shares of CRM. Good luck with your trading.